What's up guys? Today we're talking color correction and how to make your footage look more Hollywood and cinematic. It's pretty easy to do. I'm sure a lot of you already do color correction and have heard of color correction. If you haven't, you should have you're in the right place. I'm gonna take you through my workflow and what I do from shoot to edit. So from what the footage looks like coming out of the camera to the finished piece that I deliver to a client or for one of my own videos or something like that. So let's jump into Premiere and check out my workflow for color correcting footage to make your clips, my clips, everyone's clips, look a little more Hollywood and cinematic, okay? Let's go. Okay, here we go color correction. We're using Premiere Pro CC. Uh, if you use Final Cut, they have plugins you can get that give you some of the same options. So we're going to go ahead and find some clips. I put four aside, just some random stuff I grabbed from little off cuts. We got a little panning of some trees and some sun there. We got some creepy scientists doing who knows what. We got a forest, a little bit of depth blew some haze into that forest to give it that depth. And we have some just random B-roll of running water, which is actually the LA River. So let's start with that. Let's set our in and out points to give us our clip length, bring that into the timeline. Boom, just like that. So first what I'm gonna do is unlink the audio, command L, because I don't need that. I only want the video. And when, when there's an audio file, but there's no audio in that audio file, I just like to delete it so that I know what I'm working with. And here we go. You're gonna go up to Window and click Lumetri Color. It's gonna give you this tab on the right side here with your exposures and contrasts, shadows and whatnot. This is primarily what we're gonna be working with. It gives you creative options for the creative tab. It gives you curves, your color wheels, your vignettes, all that kind of stuff. But we're gonna work primarily with the basic correction. It gives you the use of LUTs, and a LUT is short form lookup table, essentially a preset. So if let's say one of your favorite artists or someone that you know has a certain look to their footage that you love and want to use, they may or may not have created a LUT for that, which you can then apply as a preset to your footage and boom, there you go. Yours looks the same now. So very, very handy and you can access those through here once you buy them and download them from whoever and wherever. So first things first, I look at this footage and you gotta know what you want. I have a very contrasty, punchy style. I like the shadows to be deep. I like the blacks to be really deep. The whites and the highlights to be high. It's just essentially more dramatic. So to do that, I'm gonna bring my exposure down a little bit. I'm gonna bring the blacks down a little bit. And it's preference, you're gonna slide these around until you kind of get the desire that you want. The more that you do it, the more you're gonna know what sliders do what and what gives you what look. That's a lot of what's in there, but it's the truth. So this is looking a little too dark, that's good. I'm gonna bring the blues up a little bit so that it looks a little more, there we go. It's got a little more color and life in it right there. That's the temperature. If you want it to look more like it was shot at sunset, you might go more towards the orange side. That looks more like it's at dusk now just when the sun's setting, but we want it to be a little more blue and cold, so we're gonna drag that to the left. We can keep going down with those blacks. We can bring those shadows in a little bit. Make sure those highlights are still poking through while that water runs. And I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. You can see the comparison from the right to the left. We don't wanna go overkill. We don't want it to look like this, you know, with the contrast way up. If that's your style and that's what you're going for, that might work depending on what else you have shot for it. But I'm gonna stick around this range. That's, I think, a little bit more contrasty than what I had, but that's fine for the sake of example. Now, another way to get the cinematic in Hollywood kind of feel and look is adding matte bars to the top and bottom of your clips. Now, in Final Cut, you could just go in and add a 235 matte and you could select the offset of the footage versus the, and it was great. So instead, in Premiere, we're gonna right click down here in our project panel. We're gonna hit new item and go over to adjustment layer and then just hit okay when that dialog pops up. You're gonna drag that in your timeline, boom, right on top of your footage and then you can line them up, hit B for blade, A to select again and delete that extra part that we don't need. 
And you're gonna go over to effects and you're gonna type in here, this little box, crop. And that's gonna bring up the crop effect. And you're gonna drag that onto your adjustment layer. Once you've done that, you're gonna go up to the left side here to effect controls. And you can see that now those crop options are in our effect control. So I'm just gonna go over to top, change that to about 12%, hit enter. Bottom 12%, hit enter as well. And that gives me some fake kind of matte bars that give you an even more cinematic look that you can apply across your footage. Now, keep in mind, these matte bars are just covering my footage. So underneath this bar and underneath this bar is still information. There's still footage there, it's just covered. So if you have something vital at the bottom or the top of your frame that you just simply don't want cut off, it might not be the best idea to add matte bars. Uh, you might just want to shoot with a camera and a frame rate that gives you that 235 matte natively like a red, but if you don't have access to that and you still want that Hollywood look, this is probably the best way to do it. So that is one clip, that's the water done. Let's do the scientists. I've already selected my in and out points. I'm gonna drag that in, boop, right there. Okay, first things first, let's kill that audio, boom. And it's too dark, it's obviously too dark. I just want it to be a little bit brighter to there. But now that's bringing up my background and I don't want that background. So that's where I'm gonna crush the blacks a bit more and the shadows a bit more and you can see Tweak that exposure a little, right there, the blacks, the shadows, and it's just fine tuning. Now it's got rid of that background, but it's made it a little bit brighter, which is nice. So I'm gonna make sure those highlights are still nice and crisp because I want that, love that reflection on his glasses, and I really want that boom to pop. I don't want it so blue. I shot this with gels and with my lights specifically to give a blue cast to this footage because it just felt like a laboratory science and just had a cold kind of clean feel that, you know, versus something being this way, I felt like that looked more sciency preference. But this particular clip could use a little less, so I'm just gonna drag my temperature towards the orange a little bit more. That's gonna give me the look I want, the nice clean look, maybe a little bit more on that exposure side, and then we can come down to curves. You're just gonna click that curve tab, and you're gonna give yourself a slight little S curve. So down here at the bottom is gonna be the darks, you get the mids up here, and you get the highs up here, okay? So we just wanna make a little bit of an S curve. So we're just gonna drop the, the, the darks down there and bring up the brightness slightly, and that's what we're looking at. So now when we play that back, as you can see from left to right, if we go to about the same spot in the frame, a big difference. We can copy that adjustment layer that we already made for the water. Just hold down Alt, click and drag over, let go of the mouse first, then let go of Alt, and we can cut that with the blade tool to fit, save, and we are good to go. Now we've got mats over that, and look how much more cinematic that looks from what we have over here on the left side. So much better. Let's do another one. Let's say we want, let's do something subtle. In and out points are already done. I'm gonna drag this in. This clip is nice and bright. I almost wouldn't even change anything. It just needs a little more. I love that sun peeking in and I wanna accentuate that sun a little bit more. So I wanna add some orange to this to really bring out the warmth of the tree and the sun sneaking through. I'm gonna find a point in the clip where the sun's not washed out the frame, so right about here, and I'm gonna color correct off this frame. So I'm gonna bring that exposure down a little bit just so it's not so washed out. I'll bring those blacks down a little bit to really bring out that color as well with the contrast is gonna do that. And you can see I'm pretty much done. I don't need to do anything else. I am super happy with that. I'm gonna copy my map over and look already how good that looks. It's just great. We got one more clip to go. Let's do the forest here. Let's double click on this. In and out points already selected. This is our forest. Looks great. It's just a little dark and a little too green. So again, I'm gonna slide that temperature further towards the warm side. I'm gonna bring that exposure up a little bit because I don't want it to be so dark. Contrast, I want it to remain punchy. Drop those blacks a little bit, put the whites up. And see, now if the shadows are completely taken out, you lose all the detail. So you wanna keep the shadows in. I'm 
just gonna tweak them ever so slightly so that it's just a little bit brighter. If we go to the same spot, you can compare now left to right side. It's much better on the right side opposed to the left side. We'll copy that mat over, drag it to fit, and now you can see that looks so much more cinematic than it did before. Something else you can do that's not just a color adjustment, but the, the odd, I know this isn't a video about audio, but because I'm in the edit right now, I just wanna touch on these things, is adding sound effects and music to your clips to change the mood. You can already change enough of it with the color. As you can see here, I've got a little transition so you can see the color difference, and then you can see the difference with the matte. But for example, let's add a sound effect of a forest and just hear already the dynamic and extra just life that that gives a clip. Sounds great. Now if we add music to that, maybe I want to make it mysterious, slightly sad, but not really, but build some anticipation for what's going to come next. I'm going to do something like this. And the same thing goes. Let's say this was a city park. So I'm gonna enable my sound effects for this. And I just have some ambient noise of people walking and talking in a park. You can hear that now. It adds a huge dynamic. And then if we enable our music to that, this is a really happy clip. I kind of want it to be like engaging and energetic and really get people pumped up for what the next scene's gonna be. And music can do that. And here's an example of that. Boom, done. Science, same kind of thing. Uh, I have a little sound effect ambience of some pots and pans bubbling and some, some lab sound effects. Super creepy, and if we want to up that creepiness, we put on the kind of like a monotone, just low rumbling effect, kind of like this. Not really music, but something to really set the mood. And you can see how that's gone from an okay looking clip to a way better looking clip to something cinematic now with some actual story and depth to it. And last but not least, the water, obviously. We get a little water sound effect going in there. It sounds like this. And this is slow motion, it's kind of sad. So if we put some kind of sad guitar in there, we're really gonna set the mood for what people feel when they watch this clip. And that's what filmmaking's all about. So you can see it doesn't really take long to make your footage look a lot better than just skimming through a clip and saying, ah, it doesn't look good. Now, I've said this before, you're gonna wanna shoot as close as you can in camera so that your footage looks great and it only needs a little bit of tweaking in post because the more you tweak and the more effects you add and cake onto footage, the worse it's gonna look, okay? So that is our color correction demo and you can see here, if we go into it, that's what it looks like with the map bars, with the map bars gone, and then with our effects gone. So you can see we did quite a bit. Same thing with this. Map bars gone and the effects gone, much darker. Get rid of those map bars and we will get rid of the color. Very, very different. Same thing. Map bars gone and your color gone. So color correction is huge. You really want to tweak with it. This is the panel. It's your Lumetri color. It's on the right side. You've got your creative. And you can go a lot further than we did. Those were just some basic, basic moves to get your stuff looking better right out of the gate. Now, I use this a lot. If it was a project that was for a commercial use or for TV or something like that, there's people, their whole living is made by color correcting footage. They're called colorists and they use way more advanced software and they do some pretty incredible things. If you watch Netflix or you go to the movie, by the time you see that finished product, it's undergone a 
pretty big procedure to look completely different than how it probably came out of the camera. But all of the same little things still apply. You're gonna wanna put that time into making your footage look as best as you can. And hopefully, after watching this, you guys will be well on your way to color correcting a little bit more of your clips. And that's it guys, there's not much to it. There's a lot of programs and apps out there that can really up the ante when it comes to color correction. I would check out something called DaVinci Resolve. It's like really, really, really fucking awesome when you wanna color correct. There's lots of extra steps. I mean, there's people out there that do this specifically for a living. I'm not saying that I do color correction for a living. This is just what I do to get by, to get my footage looking the way that I like it. So I hope you guys like it too and got something out of it. Get in there and start color correcting your footage. And I hope that your stuff starts looking a little more Hollywood and cinematic. See you guys next time on the next tutorial. Until then, keep shooting.